Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, Tea Sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So it's time for another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered, and I have my homegirl with me here, B.L. Sherelle. Yeah. Hey, y'all. So we wanted to come on here and talk about quite a few things. There's a lot of stuff going on right now in the industry Uh, that we wanted to hit on, honey. So if y'all don't know, I was just telling B.L., I was like, oh, once again, Tigro Diamond strikes. (laughs) (laughs) And you know I'm good for a good flashback, right? And, um... So there's been a lot of controversy going on right now with YG. YG is being silenced. They have removed his video called Beat the Flockers off of YouTube. And YouTube was initially fighting to keep it. But now because of the pressure from the Asian community, they have removed the video. And then today it was announced that his song has been deplatformed. They've taken it off of Spotify, Google, and Apple Music. So this is crazy, but I'm not shocked by this because I spoke on this two years ago when Spotify was talking about removing R. Kelly, Tay K, and XXX from their playlist. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this flashback, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. And so, yes, this R. Kelly situation is getting messier and messier, honey. But you know what? I'm here for it, bitch, okay? So my thing is this. While I understand what Spotify is trying to do, and while a lot of people are clapping and saying, yes, yes, remove R. Kelly's music. He's a pervert. He's a pedophile. That's fine and dandy, but my thing is, where does this end? Because what they're saying in that statement rings true, okay? This is just me being objective. If you're going to remove R. Kelly's music based on, you know, you know, this whole Me Too movement, based on people not feeling him right now, then there's going to be a lot of people that also need to be affected, okay? Let's keep it real. Right now, Fabulous is going to court, even though Emily B's goofy self is by his side at court, okay? For basically, you know, domestic violence, for knocking out her two front teeth, but yet and still his music is still on Spotify. You know what I mean? We have criminals like T.I., you know, who's been convicted of multiple felonies. His music is still on Spotify. So my thing is, where does it end? If we're going to cheer them to getting rid of R. Kelly's music and Tay K's music and XXX's music, where does it end? So by the logic that Spotify is trying to implement, they're going to need to remove a lot more people's music. I don't disagree with them with taking R. Kelly's music off, but I do feel that he should not be the only one. There's a lot of people out here talking reckless, saying reckless shit. You got the Cash Me Outside girl. Her music is on there. She's a horrible role model. A lot of these young kids be out here just talking about stupid shit selling drugs having sex you know doing drugs and their music is still on spotify so where does this end so to me i'm looking at this from almost a censorship point of view that you know right now people can cheer on that because it's r kelly or maybe because you don't listen to xxx or tay k that's fine but what happens when these same rules affect people that you do listen to the ti you know what i'm saying who has a criminal background or you know like a gucci man who just got out of prison you know a few years ago he has a criminal background you know so there's a lot of people in the industry especially in the hip-hop industry with really shady backgrounds so where does it end so if we're going to get rid of you know these three artists who else are we going to get rid of all right so that was Um, you hit that one amen (laughs) so you know you being an artist yourself um do you feel like there's ever a a right to censor an artist or do you feel like in this day and age artists are kind of pushing it you know they're pushing things to the limit and maybe that's why the censorship is happening so I don't I don't feel like there's ever really a reason to censor artists um because it would just like you said the the snowball effect would be too great Mm -hmm. and the, the slope is too slippery and for them to start with this song this YG record it's come on it's it's really the, the lyrics is, first you find a house and scope it out. Find a Chinese neighborhood because they don't believe in bank accounts. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's literally all he kind of says. Now, the story is about, you know, running in somebody's house, robbing somebody's house. But that's really no different than when people talk about robbing Poppy, the plug, and, you know, all that other stuff. So it's like for them to pick this, I feel like they knew YG was a soft target that not too many people going to go up for. And I feel like it's a, a, a two-bird, one-stone situation where they get to... Um, 
once again, put that black people against Asians rhetoric out there. And also it's very performative because they know that nobody really cares about this song. They know that YG's bass isn't that strong, you know? So mm. I just feel like they had motives in choosing with this particular record. If that's the case, it's so much it, shit. Even just the YouTubers that's on, on YouTube, they don't even make music, but they just spew a lot of rhetoric and a lot of hate and all that. Y'all should start with them. And it's just, with the pedophilia and all that other shit, start with them. So wow. it's just very performative. And, you know, for that reason, I just I'm like, this is some bullshit. Yeah. The thing I found funny about the whole situation when I first heard the uproar, I'm like, well, ain't that song old? Like this is we're in 2021. And the song came out in 2014. Um, and I remember there was controversy in 2016 when she released the video. There was some controversy from the Asian community back then, but it wasn't a whole lot. And then um, I think I had told you about there was like a robbery that went down in Atlanta and they try to blame this song for them doing the robbery. They try to blame it on YG's song. But even that didn't go anywhere. The video still stood. The music was still there. But now because of this whole stop the Asian hate propaganda, um, these companies are basically bowing down and they're scared. You know, they're scared to look bad because at first YouTube was like, no, we're not going to remove it. This is freedom of speech. And then once they got more pressure from the Asian community, then all of a sudden they backed down. So it's, it's really crazy how that is. I want to go ahead and play a news clip that I have here where they're talking about the situation. So let me go ahead and play that for you really quick here. Rage in Oakland today over the lyrics to a popular rap song. KPIX 5's Da Lin says some call it freedom of expression, but others see the song as an open invitation to target one particular community. Because you know, I tooted and booted out. Popular rapper YG has had some major hits on the radio. Critics say the song provides a step-by-step -step blueprint and encourages even more bad guys to target Chinese families. Not only that people will be losing properties, but also people maybe get hurt and could be killed. We are coming together to protect our community. Some city leaders and Chinese Americans protested against a song in Oakland Chinatown this afternoon. People are also protesting in Philadelphia tonight, where YG has a concert. They say way too many Asian families, like this one, caught on tape in Oakland, have been robbed and burglarized. It's not about you or me. It's about us. So let us work together. Hot Boy Weez is a Berkeley rapper who's also been convicted of robbery. He says it's freedom of expression, and songs are often a reflection of their own experience. If they can't speak freely, then exactly what's the point of rapping? Like, then you, you can't. You can't use your creative side. Even if you are coming up in a life of crime or violence, you don't want to glorify it. You want to talk about the conditions that would eradicate the need for such things. You would be responsible with your art. Community leaders want YG to apologize and remove the song. Some say this goes back to that bigger debate of whether or not gangster rap incites and glorifies violence. In Oakland, I'm Da Lin, KPIX 5. YG released the songs a couple of years ago, but some in the Chinese American community just learned of it in recent months. There are several online petitions demanding YG to remove the song. All right, sis. Child, they done took over your city. They're <laughs> totally protesting, demanding apologies from YG. Now, what I find really funny about this situation, and like I said, I have no, I have nothing against any community. But I noticed the narrative is so different now when it comes to the Asian community getting hate and getting mistreated. Now things are being done. Now conversations about gangster rap lyrics are being taken seriously. But in the words of Afini Shakur, if you guys remember in that Tupac movie, what did Afini say? Afini said in that movie, they're going to give you the tools that you need to destroy yourself. They are going to give you the tools that you need to destroy yourself. OK, that is what she said in that Tupac movie. So it's funny that when these same tools are given to young black men to talk about robbing other black men, killing other black people, you know, what I'm saying selling drugs to their own community. That's, you know, applauded. It's praised. It's rewarded. But as soon as he said a line about Asian people, now we need to reevaluate rap and gangster music. So how do you feel about that? Well, see, here's the thing. And it's funny that they said they was in Philly because <laughs> what he said is a thing. Like people do rob, go to the Chinese neighborhoods to rob because they do tend to have a lot of cash one day. So that's just some real street shit. That's it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, though, it's the Asian community that's speaking out 
it's never really the black community. We don't speak out about how we feel rap or hip hop may um, influence us to a point where we like take that shit down. Like when, when everybody's saying they smoking on Tuca, it wasn't a big uproar. It wasn't a big thing where black people was like, yo, we, we, we going to boycott if y'all don't, you know, take that shit down and stop saying that y'all smoking on that 15 year old boy. So I feel like, you know, a lot of it is because we don't, we don't fight for that. So the Asian community here, they naming some shit like, uh-uh, what I got to do with it? Like, no, stick, stick to y'all nigga shit, you know, talk y'all shit amongst each other, but don't bring us in it. So like from that perspective, I'm not mad at the Asians for saying, yo, don't fucking, you know, bring us in it. You know, just like I said earlier, like when people be talking about Robin Poppy and all that, the Spanish people never came up and like, oh, don't, don't bring us in. No, that's hate. Da, 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 da. Had they done that, it might be a different result. So mm -hmm. I can't really get mad at the Asians for feeling that way, but I do see the performative side from, you know, YouTube and Spotify and all of them as well at the same time. Right. Like I get them for being upset, but like you said, you know, this song has been out for how long and y'all are just not upset, but it's just funny how quickly these major corporations are moving because the Asian community is upset, you know? And I think, there are black people who do protest certain things and, and, you know, they might get upset about certain songs or say like, this is going too far, but a lot of times they get dismissed as, you know, you're just a hater, you're bitter, you're a coon, you know, and that's how we kind of treat people who kind of, you know, may not agree with certain things. Right. Right. Meaning yeah, we, right. Where with the Asian community, they all banded together. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I definitely what you're saying with that. that. That's the difference, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, honestly, if it, black people, like Asians have super PACs, Asians have political power, you know, if black people were to band together like Asians banded together, we can get a lot more shit done as well. But we always, we're just very, we're just divisive sometimes. We don't, you know, we all can't get on one accord. And it's not because, you know, people like, oh, all black people aren't a monolith. We're not saying that we should be or that we are. It's just certain things. There should be certain lines that, you know, shouldn't be crossed. And that should be that. But we can't even do that, unfortunately. So that's why you see a quick, such a quick, um, a quick interference on the behalf of corporations. Whereas though for us, they just, you know, they let us murder each other all day. They don't give a fuck because we're not fighting in that way. Together. And this is why we need to wake up. You know, I remember there was a white guy. I don't know if you ever saw that video I posted on Instagram. He went viral and he was basically talking about hip hop and how they put certain things in hip hop music because they know it's going to affect the black community. So while white kids that. listen, okay, so you did see it. Okay, so while white kids listen to it, it's not the reality. So it doesn't matter to them. It's just a hot song, a hot track. But to the black kids that it's supposed to be, you know, that's what they're supposed to emulate and be like these, you know, top rappers, you know, it really plants a lot of seeds in the community for the negative. You can't get away with it. Nobody, nobody would put it out there. But we do have black people that get on the radio every day in white owned companies, white owned stations with white owned sponsors that play the role of hypersexualized, hypercriminalized male. I asked these advertisers, I say, I've got hundreds of songs a day that celebrate killing animals. Will you put them on your station? They said, no. I got hundreds of songs a day that talk about assaulting women and, 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 and abusing kids. Would you put them on your station? They said, no. I said, I got hundreds of songs a day that talk about murdering blacks. Would you put them on your stations? They said, well, that depends. Depends on what? Who it's done by and who it's branded for. Because if we can get black folks to sing about it and we can brand it for our youngest black audiences, I think there's money to be made. I think there's American appetites to see these people that way. I said, how can you say that? They said, well, look, it's what these artists know. It's what they black people uh, create. It's matter of fact, our surveys say it's what they want to hear, which speaks of a sickness. How do we live in a society where somebody says, you know what, I'm inspired to write a song that celebrates murdering another person. And then a person says, I'd like to put that on my station. Another person said, I'd like to pay for it. And then there's people out here in the audience that go, I'd love to hear it as long as it's black guys. Because even white people buy rap music, buy this type of stuff, because we know that when we want to hear about killing each other, we know who to turn to for that type of inspiration. I, I, I would be lying if I said, oh, rap has nothing to do with any violence on the street. That would be a lie, you know? Right. And um, it's funny, I remember like maybe a few years ago being the person like, oh, oh, well, do you tell your kids when they watch Scarface, do you say, I remember giving that argument about, oh, Scarface made everybody want to be drug dealers so y'all don't blame the Italians. Like I remember being that person, mm -hmm. but it's like, it gets to a point where you can't ignore the truth. You can't ignore that without rap music, the drill scene would have never spilled over global. That mm -hmm. wouldn't have happened. 
It just would have been, a, a, you know, a, a thing in the pocket of a certain part of society. Um, then when it turned into the music, it, it spilled over and became global. And now it done took my city over. I don't know if I live in Philly or if I live in uh, Chicago. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, we talk like them. You know, we, the slang is like them. It's just so crazy how, you know, things have been taken over in the, in the, the power of rap music. So, you know, that would be a lie if I didn't acknowledge that. Yo, what's up? Baby, Hey, Tea Sippers, to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.